Once and again, what the devil does is that he likes to hide his true identity behind situations, behind people, behind circumstances. He does that. And you will need to be able to discern what entity is at work. All right? You notice that there is a pattern and your marital life is experiencing a huge delay. And even when relationships begin, it ends for very trivial reasons. It happened once, happened twice, happened three times. That is a pattern. It means that there is a great likelihood that there is a spiritual entity that is responsible for the trends, responsible for the patterns. Then when you begin to pray about it, then God now gives you insight. You cannot begin by inocular prayers until you have an insight that, that isolates the culprit. In the case of the woman that had the coverture of the spine, it was a spirit of infirmity. For many of us, it is the spirit that was worshipped, maybe by your father or grandfather, that is still looking for current worshippers. So, and he knows that he has chances around your life because there is a link. There is something, there is an opening that was secured because of the worship that was done by previous generations. So you've left home, you are now, you are now in England, you are hidden away, but the spirit um, doesn't visit the next door, comes straight to your household because it's hoping to uh, find memory, find worship, find access, find entrance. And then he now finds you in laxity and uh, your, your walls are falling. <laughs> so he comes out and begins to master you and to allow you to accept his influence over your life. And because of your laxity, he is able to secure a place. And then after a long time, you now discover that the patterns around your life are not, there is a logic behind it. There is a science behind it. And that means there is an intelligent entity that is masquerading behind those circumstances in order to bring you into bondage. The moment you come into the realization, and meanwhile, when this kind of spirits operate, they give you pictures in your dreams. They announce their presence in your dreams. You cannot be romancing with a spirit and not see the spirit in your dreams. It's mm. impossible. You can't be walking with the Holy Ghost and not receive dreams and intelligences, revelations from the Holy Ghost. You can't, you can't. Even if you are a dreamer or not, he will show up on your dream and say, Hey! Wake up! He will do something to make you know that he's around. Hallelujah. So when, when spirits are romancing with you, you are likely to see them. They are images. Because spirits, are, are you there? When they pass around your corridor, they activate your soul. And they manifest through images. They manifest through thoughts. They manifest through pictures. That's the language of the spirits generally. So you are, going to, you are likely to see this activity, find expression. And if you are here today, are you with me? And there are several types of dreams that sustain a certain definite theme that keeps replaying, 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 is the proof of the fact that there is an entity that is in your space and that entity is holding sway around your life. So in order for you to begin to engage binocular prayers, you must be able to isolate the culprit. And when you do, because you know, it says, son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh. Now, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him. You are going to go direct. Satan does not like direct combat because he's not as strong as he likes to make you think he is. He needs to tell a lie. He needs to walk through a deception. He needs to bring an exaggeration to you in order for him to holds sway in your life. The moment the spirit of truth goes to work 
and isolates the culprit and puts him before your face, then God empowers you to engage in binocular prayer. When you begin to engage in binocular prayer, there are symptoms that are going to spill out all over the place. But you must understand that those things are normal. Okay, let me read to you. It said, Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and all Egypt. Speak and say. So this kind of prayer, you don't do it in tongues. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You can pray in tongues to vitalize your spirit. You can pray in tongues to activate your spirit. You can pray, pray in tongues to energize your spirit. But when you begin to do the binocular engagement, God is teaching the prophet. He says, speak and say. Now stop. He's not asking you to speak your own words. But he's asking you to speak his words. So even before you begin the binocular prayer, you must have received the word of the Lord for the matter. So what binocular prayers is about is enforcing, is an enforcement protocol. This is what God said. God said this. And because God said this, you must do this. And you don't stop. You, you do it in the morning. You do it in the afternoon. You do it in the night. Until you weary Satan. The name, the meaning of endurance is outlasting the devil. You are not going to take any territory from Satan if you are not mad. Yeah. You are mad with your consistency. You are mad with your engagement. You are mad with your attack. When the devil sees that this man is crazy and he will not stop, he will, he will give way. So he said, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, you see, when we continue in the things that God put in his mouth to say, you will now see the true reality of Pharaoh. According to this insight that he got from God that is declaring now, the reality of Pharaoh was a great dragon that lied in the midst of the rivers. What does this great dragon say? He say, which say at the river is my own. I made it for myself. Now, this dragon likes a sense of entitlement, sense of ownership, sense of control. This dragon will never leave until it is clear that he cannot stay. And that's why, we, don't start. Don't start. This is not a game. It's not a walk in a park. If you want to reclaim territory, it means you are saying there is nothing else I will settle for except territory. You need to be stubborn. You need to be consistent. You need to pedestal the need to reclaim the territory higher than your own appetites, your own pleasures. That's how we fight off the enemy. The dragon that lieth in the midst of the waters which says, what? The river is my own and I made it for myself. Suddenly, this dragon takes a creative designation. Meanwhile, we know that Satan was not given any license to create anything. But he said, this is my creation. So I'm at liberty to use this life, to use this destiny any way I want, unchallenged. That's what the dragon is saying. And so when you want to contend with this beast, oh my God, you cannot start and stop I am against you. We are going to use those words in our practical in a moment. And this place will be set on fire. 
The spirit of revelation will take you beyond the first value and you can now see the dragon that lies in the midst of the water. You will see as we proceed how that God begins to put words in the mouth of the prophet to speak against the dragon. So the first word we have picked from here, the first statement we have picked from here is, I am against you. Somebody say, I am against you. Against you. you see, I know you've not said this kind of thing for a long time, for years. You, you've not been bold enough to say that, you see, Find that boldness this morning. Find it this morning. I am against. It means you are saying that, um, you know, both of us will not be here. One must be knocked out. It's either you knock me out, and when you knock me out, do it very well. Because if there's any strand of me still left, I will still be what? Against. Still be against. I'll be against you on Monday. I'll be against you on Tuesday. I'll be against you on Wednesday. In fact, my job is to be against you. So that's one word I'd like you to pick from that scripture. I am what? I want us to see the words that God put in the mouth of this prophet. But I will put hooks, verse 4, in thy jaws, and I will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick upon thy scales. And I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers and all the fish of thy waters shall stick to thy scales and I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness thee and all the fish of thy rivers and thou shalt fall upon the open fields and thou shalt not be brought together nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beast of the fields and to the inhabitants, to the beasts of the field, and to the fowls of heaven. So the possibility of returning to that place of dominion will be cut off forever. When a true warrior fights, Satan can no longer recover for eternity. Set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, this is what you are going to do. You are going to run an investigation for the next uh, 30 seconds. What patterns have you seen in your life? What patterns, what patterns have you noticed? The power of God can reverse any situation. Don't accept any contrary situation to be your lot and your portion. Irrespective of whether you were a notorious unbeliever before you gave your life to Christ. That does not count anymore. When you find a pattern that is not consistent as we pray in the spirit, that you give a name to it. That is what we are going to strike. So we are going to pray in tongues. Everyone is going to be, forget about your lipstick. The alignment of your lipstick must, will be compromised in the process. Can you begin to ascend in the spirit? Oh, I can't hear the voice of the warrior here. There must be a warrior in the room. There must be a fighter among us. The dragon is not merciful. The dragon is not merciful. The dragon shows no mercy. He shows no mercy. He wants to regulate. He wants to control your destiny. Presi ke bodoli akambo sate. Goria si cobrante kasala bonta mele. Gombes ke topa kabosa minaite. Gombe la bobo si cobras ke tomina cantelia. Uke baba suntelia. Rice compalando. The voice of the warrior must ascend, must arise. The dominion of the dragon must be cut off. Hey, so conde, hey, so conde. Prisco baba bon sakaya, cure babo siko. Glory to your name. 
in Jesus mighty name my love for this teaching is on the high side it is very simple and powerful message on how to fight the spiritual warfare the wisdom embedded in this message is like an empowerment just like as it is written in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12 for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense but the excellency of the knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it let me quickly take you through the elected powerful statement made by me while editing this message i want to welcome you once again to the commentary session of the great light channel and i'm sure you will enjoy this statement i noted the first of all is that the devil likes to hide his true identity behind situations, people, and circumstances. Therefore, you need to be able to discern each situation to know what entity is behind such matters. But once you notice a consistent pattern, it is a great proof that there is a spiritual entity that is responsible for such a pattern, and to know such an entity, you will need to engage God in prayer for insight. As a believer, Satan is always on your case to make you unfruitful. So whenever he finds you lukewarm, what he does is, he will begin to make you accept his influence over your life for him to secure your place and territory. This is why every Christian must be fathers in the spirit. Also, note that you can't be in partnership with the spirit and not see it around you. It will show up in different ways, such as through dreams, images and thoughts, just to let you know that they are around. Even if the spirit is the spirit of God, it will show up in diverse ways because that is the way of the spirit. Satan is not as powerful as he likes to make you think. He doesn't like direct combat because he is not strong. He needs to tell a lie, walk through a deception, and exaggerate for you to form a strong hold in your life. Whenever you have insight about the spirit involved and you begin to pray, be aware that there are symptoms that you will notice, but know that those things are normal. Doing spiritual warfare, what you need to do is to enforce the will of God, which is the word you secured from him. You have to remain consistent with Satan. The meaning of endurance during spiritual warfare is outlasting the devil because you won't be able to take any territory from Satan if you are not persistent in enforcing the will of God. To regain territory, you need to be consistent and put out priority to reclaim the territory higher than your appetite and pleasure. Every day, morning, afternoon and night, you must be against Satan and be determined not to stop. But note that when the true warrior fights, Satan can no longer recover because he or she will consistently be against his agenda, agenda and will by yielding completely to the will of God. I will have a little blessed by this message and I will enjoy you to share it with at least one person so that you also can get blessed by this powerful message. Thank you for listening and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. My name is Olawale Ayomide Ogunjobi, the admin of the Great Light channel. Thank you and remain blessed. Amen.